Hello, welcome back to Farzans Gaming. My name is Ben, and today we're going to continue on Suzerain. So, last time we left off, um, nothing super important happened. Uh, we attended a film screening and a religious ceremony thing. Um, that was pretty much just looking at um, trying to improve our optics after the failure that was our constitutional reforms. So, let's go and pick up here with the uh, news reports. We've got four of them here. So, let's see. Whole sword post. Being weird again. Got school. There we go. All the way down to the bottom. So, court strikes down Arison v. Sortland. Chief Justice Hawker of the Supreme Court made an announcement after the majority of the justices voted against the violation of constitutional rights for British citizens as proposed by Arison. The landmark case, which was politically charged with the support of WPB and even PFJP establishment, caused major disagreement between the Ministry of Justice and the Supreme Court. Uh, criticisms were handed over to Minister of Justice Nia Morgman, who filed a concurrence. Chief Justice Hawker highlighted the importance of impartial justice once again. We keep seeing things about this, but nothing's, like, come of it yet, as far as, like, um, being, like, relevant to us. So I'm not really sure what's going on here. That's all right. All right, let's hit up uh, the Lock Haven Times. Uh, Oscroft anniversary? I'm not sure on that one. Watani Oscroft, hero to some, enemy to others. He is for sure one of the most controversial figures who have ever lived in our country. As his anniversary is approaching, there is one question that is shared in everyone's minds. What will the administration do? Every year, people gather in Erzurum to hold a vigil and a solemn anniversary of his death. They light their candles in his memory and hold cultural festivals. What is different this year, however, are the claims that the Bluetish movement will be holding their largest rally yet in Erzurum during the anniversary. Perhaps it is time for the administration to let bygones be bygones and take a step back to display the unity of Sordland to the people who very much need it. Interesting. Alright, so who is this guy? Okay, he was a Bluetish carpenter who was killed by soldier soldiers during his protest against the construction of the Soul Bam. Ah, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, so if that comes up, I will definitely um, do whatever I can to support them for that. Alright, and we got two more here from the Radical. Education privatization. Are our children doomed? As we expected, Anton Rain's decision to privatize the Swordland education system has had a seriously deleterious effect. Young people in rural and low-income areas are being increasingly priced out of the education they deserve, while a relatively small handful of wealthy families reap the benefits. As proof, witness the higher-than-ever gap between test scores in Narbel and Holzord. We had high hopes for Education Minister C.R. Waldo when Rain first appointed her, but she seems to only be enabling his delusions that corporations will solve all of Swordland's problems. Clearly, they both need to go. And justice failed once again. As expected, the Supreme Court ruled against the Erson v. Swordland case. The massive rights case has struck down any future precedent for an argument to be made against constitutional rights violation of individuals through legislative action. Chief Justice Hawker argued that legislative actions and constitutional acts are not to be confused and that the Bluetish people are equal under the law. The soulless constitutionalist justices are going as far as they can to bend the truth to hide the uh, inequalities of our society. The fight for justice will continue. Nice, okay. So that was interesting. Okay, we got a story beat in Whole Sword and a report in Narbel. So let's go look at that one first. A uh, new school completed. Narbel celebrated the opening of its new secondary school, a two story building with 50 classrooms and state of the art teaching equipment. The school is funded as part of the government initiative to improve rural access to education. Right, and that totally clashed with that news report that we're just ignoring uh, rural education. So, fantastic. Alright, got a report. So, we'll start with that. Uh, the Supreme Court has filed a 6-5 to five dissent and closed the Erson v. Swordland case today. Chief Justice Hawker dismissed the concurrence of the Ministry of Justice, citing that the treatment of Bluetish people has been equal before the law. Further press releases were made. Uh, criticizing the words of the Vice Minister of Justice, which constitutional rights won't be in question for some time. Okay. 
and briefing on the diplomatic strategy. The doors to the White Room, like everything else in the Moon Maroon Palace's main nerve center, were painted white. I took a deep breath before pushing them open. Time for yet another meeting. At least this time is with people who liked me. Alright, so he says we've got uh, Joseph Lancia right here, but whatever. The attendees rose up from their seats. Mr. President. Yosef nodded. He and Lucian sat down while David remained standing. Now that you're here, let's talk about a diplomatic strategy. David cleared his throat. Mr. President, if I may, I would like to provide you with a short overview of where we are at right now. Yeah, go ahead. We have successfully passed trade deals with both Valen and Agnolia, which means we have increased our presence in those regions. These deals are important pieces of leverage and significant first steps into the global arena. We must now look towards the future. Yeah, it's time to take the next steps. Precisely. David sat down, pulled out a few papers, and started going through them as he kept talking. Vale and Agnolia are practice runs. We must begin improving our relationship with greater nations. We need to elevate our international standing, especially with the threat of Rumberg looming. Yosef cleared his throat. Mr. President, you know me. I don't trust the helping hands other countries offer us, for a good reason. But I also know those helping hands are necessary. And right now, we need all the help we can get. I have said this over and over, but I will repeat it until you get it through your skull. Rumberg will come, sooner or later. With the current state of our military, if the Rumberg invasion happens, Soldan will cease to exist. We need allies. We ought to heed General Lancia's advice, Mr. President. Alright, we're going to agree with him for like the first time ever, and I trust your assessment, Yosef. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, military perspective is important, but these deals are about more than just gaining allies. We also need to consider the benefits to our economy such deals will provide. Especially when you are still struggling to end the recession. David took a seat and brought out two stacks of documents. Yeah, at the start of our term, I had a comprehensive trade deal plan laid out. Following the visits to Vail and Agnolia, we are to pursue potential trade deals with two greater nations. Falkland is one of them, or at least wise. Uh, unfortunately, a trade deal with them no longer seems possible. In Falkland's case, given the country's territorial ambitions, our alliance with Agnolia was rather a slap in the face. Now those commies won't be able to invade Agnolia without facing the might of the Swordish Armed Forces. Wait, what? Right, he keeps complaining that our army is terrible and. We're going to get just horribly beat, but now he's saying they're super mighty and the fogs and can't... Yeah, whatever, she's an idiot. It will make them think twice. Yeah, true, but as a result, we won't be able to conduct a trade deal, let alone proceed with any diplomatic missions at the moment. Unfortunate. So much needless dispute over such a small island. Yeah, I'm afraid it might get much worse in the future. As we stand right now, any kind of deal with Falkland is simply out of the question. Moving on to Lesbia. Our southern neighbor is one of the wealthiest countries in East Mercopa. A trade deal with them would be very beneficial, not just for our economy, but also for our regional and international presence. Not to mention they are in the Akkazian sphere. Because we would be following through with our promise to lean westwards, this would also strengthen our border peace. Indeed, this deal could also be the first step in allying ourselves with Lesbia, or maybe even entering ATO. Alright, what's ATO? Is that like NATO? Yeah, it's essentially NATO. A trade deal with Lesbia could open many doors for us. True. A country as influential as Lesbia could help elevate our economy. That's it for the overview. As to the actual contents of the trade deal. Eh, uh, Lucian. Lucian pulled out a small notebook and quickly flipped through the pages until he landed on the right one. Looking at my stats here, we now have a small tungsten surplus. Which makes an excellent resource for trade. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. I need to know your decision before we proceed. What should we do? Before you say anything, remember what I said. 
We need allies, not just a trade. From bug attacks, we will fall. In negotiations with Lesbia. I mean, why wouldn't we? Excellent news. I'll begin at once. That was all I had for today. Thanks for coming. Thank you, gentlemen. Joseph saluted as we left the white room. Ooh, wow, a whole bunch of things popped up. Ooh, ooh wow, and the economy just shot up from two to two to five there. That's fantastic. Okay, so let's set up the news. Full sort post: isolated polio cases seen in Berja. Several villages in Berja have been safely placed in a quarantine after a few polio cases were diagnosed in the region. The outbreak is largely confined to Wayland, and there is little chance of further infections occurring in Sola. Even if there was, the disease's most notorious symptom, paralysis, is only seen in a minute percentage of cases, and there is no need to alter the source way of life, as Health Minister Pascal Benningwell has suggested with his vaccination program in order to prevent its spread. Brilliant. Alright, Lockhaven Times, also talking about polio. Uh, concerning news from Berger, several cases of polio have recently been diagnosed in the region. The outbreak, thought to have originated across the border in Valen, is currently confined to just a few villages which are now under strict quarantine. However, Health Minister Pascal Benewell has called for swift action, including countrywide vaccination, to prevent the case numbers from multiplying. We concur that this disease, which is known to cause paralysis in severe cases, is a serious threat and must be contained at all costs. Yes, very much so. And I always kind of forget about polio because it's basically eradicated in this country now, but it was not pleasant back in the day. Alright, so the last one here from Geopolitico. Rain will visit Lesbia for trade deal. President Rain is scheduled to visit to Lesbia in order to discuss possible trade deal with Prime Minister Patricio Alvarez. Exactly what will be on the table is unclear, although insiders speculate Rain could be preparing to offer swordish fish, wheat, coal, or tungsten in exchange for lesbian capital. An alliance between the two countries is also not out of the question. What is clear is that this visit will bring Swordland closer in alignment with Arcasia. Nice. Wow, alright, we've got looks like three reports? Four reports. Nice, okay. Well, let's uh, head up here to Laren. Health qual healthcare quality improved. Reports from hospitals and clinics in Laren indicate a significant rise in the quality of healthcare since additional funding was channeled into rural areas. Mortality rates appear to be decreasing, while patients are reporting a higher level of trust in physicians and medical facilities. Nice, that's super helpful. Okay, Arvory development speeds up following highway construction. The completion of the H3 highway between Lockhaven and Arbury has resulted in decreased logistical costs and higher traffic flow to the latter city. The pace, and develop pace of development in Arbury has consequently quickened significantly, with dozens of construction projects now on the horizon. That might explain the huge boost to our economy there. Alright, Gelsword. Uh, recession hits workers. As in the rest of Swordland, workers in Gelsword are bearing the brunt of the recession. The manufacturing sector has been hit particularly hard, as a record number of factory workers filed for unemployment over the past month. Okay, that kind of runs counter, so that's interesting, okay. And Valen Trade Report. The trade deal struck with Valen continues to bear fruit as Burgess sees an upward trend in agricultural exports. Manufacturing industries are also celebrating the decreased production costs that have resulted from the uptick of importation of Vasic oil in the aftermath of Operation Bear Trap. Okay, so we've got two positive economic reports, one negative. So I guess those probably uh, cancel each other out there. Alright, the journal. Oh, just saying that we're going to meet with Lespia. Okay. Alright, another report here from Whole Sword. Uh, currency loses value against Sarkozian Lira. Financial reports show that the Swordish Ren has been steadily slipping against the Arkazian Lira, though the exchange rate has not yet approached the all-time low reached in the Alfonso administration. That's not exactly a good thing, but I guess it could be worse. Alright, cabinet meeting on the results of the vote. Ugh, this is not going to be pretty. Alright, Lucien stood upright, holding a large folder of files under his arm. He bowed in acknowledgement. He looked exhausted. 
cabinet has gathered in the white room, sir. The vice president will be opening the session soon. We can go in whenever you're ready. Anything you want to say before we go in? No, sir. Just keep your cool with the cabinets. I believe concerns will be raised in the meeting. Well, what are you saying? Should I be expecting something? No, sir. I don't believe there's anything we didn't expect. However, our failure of the reforms had a huge impact on public opinion. The party is quite discontent about the whole situation. They believe your presidency has destroyed the USP's prestige. I don't even have the guts to face me. If the party doesn't fall in line, we must consider radical changes. Such radical changes towards the end of our term is not advised, sir, but we could talk about these in the meeting. He gestured at the door with the files he held. I think we should go, sir. Mr. Vice President must have started the session already. We soon had the door for me, and we both left the office for the white room. When we entered the room, Peter was already speaking to cab cabinet members who were already seated around the table. As soon as they noticed me, they all stood up. Good day, everybody. Please have a seat. Peter turned towards me. Everybody except him took their seats. He stood right next to my chair in the middle. Oh, and here's our president. He held out my chair for me to sit down and smile. Please. I sat down. Peter walked to his seat and spoke, still standing. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to discuss our current status and plan the remaining of our term. I know that some of you have had your concerns about the style of governance so far. There will be time to speak up about these in the meeting today. But I must also thank you for all your hard work so far. We are very lucky to have a team like this, and all of you have been invaluable to this administration. Lilia's grimace is Mark's. Yeah, she's one of the most useless ones. Having said that, now we've reached a critical point of our term. We are nearing the end. We have worked long and hard, but we couldn't reform the Soldier's Constitution. The organization was flawed, our party was not united, the very parliament we control has denied us the reforms. Lucy and I have begun investigating who let us down at the vote and when we needed them the most. Gloria and the conservative wing of the party didn't back us up. Alban and the reformist wing didn't vote for us. Sarah Keeban and the National Front MPs didn't like the proposal and voted against it. He paused and looked around the room. Both the past is the past, we must now look towards the future. We are investigating and analysing our faults, and we will be taking measures accordingly. He glanced at both Lucian and me. Our party still remains divided. In order to look to the future, we may need to make some changes. On the other hand, opposition is exploiting our failure to reform. The latest poll shows steep increase in the opposition's support. So, let's start the meeting with a brief look at some reports. He fumbled with the stack of papers in front of him. The latest developments, we have seen an enormous decrease in our popularity. The public opinion about our party is at an all-time low. So I got a piece of paper from the stack and inspected it. A major concern of the people is the state of our economy. We are still plagued by the recession. So have dire consequences for our administration. We mustn't lose hope and give it our best. So the needs us more than ever. Peter turned to me. I have the word to the president now. He sat down. Mr. Vice President, thank you for the opening. Everyone's eyes were focused on me. Okay, first, I want to hear brief reports from each ministry. Peter gestured at Simon, and he immediately stood up. Mr. President, dear colleagues, Mr. Vice President was pretty on point with the summary of the current economic status. The recession is still our number one concern. This year we have seen, 10 in our, uh, seen a 10% decrease in our GDP, a shocking number. However, this is not yet reflected well with our debt situation. Our total national debt has increased to about 45 billion SR this year. If we enter a higher deficit over the next year, we will face a massive de debt crisis, which could crash the economy. The Assembly is working on introducing new tax bills, which will generate more revenue for the government. These efforts will depend on the government deficit situation. On the other hand, unemployment has seen no positive changes. On the contrary, there has been an increase in joblessness. It is now 18%. This is a bad indicator. Thousands lost their jobs. He paused for a moment. This is bad. Are there any other concerning developments? Well, I don't want to get into too much detail right now, but I have to say that sadly, our first infrastructure project has not resulted in much growth yet. But apart from all that, I'll finish with an update on our latest project. The manager reported that everything's going well and uh, very fast with the Connery Industrial Zone. I'll keep it brief for the sake of the whole meeting and end my report on that note. 
Thank you, Mr. Hole. Gus stood up as soon as Simon sat down. He asked for a private audience, which Cabin respected. It was just the two of us in the room. I will also keep it very brief, Mr. President. The trade deal with Valen increased our agricultural exports from the Berger region. Our farmers are still suffering. Our ministry did its best by giving out subsidies to local farmers, but our agricultural production remains the same. We have only recorded some development in the island region, but our farmers in Gelson and Berger are still suffering. Additionally, I bring good news regarding our investment. FC Onica has seen a boost in ticket sales after your endorsement and participation in the club. The management decided to send over a slice of that pie. The manager personally thanked you for the support you've shown to the team. Several players have already decided to join the USP. The money should be revving your account shortly. That will be all for me. Interesting. All right. Well, if these athletes are high profile, that might help raise our own profile. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Manger. Gus invited the cabinet back in and sat down. Some were obviously opposed to such behavior. Next up was Pascal. Mr. President, there are currently no major problems within the Ministry of Health. We are currently investigating some reports of a small polio outbreak around a village called Hamia. I believe we can get into more details in our policy meeting. Hmm, these reports just keep getting shorter. Joseph stepped up. The Ministry of Defense has a very important report regarding our situation with Romberg. The investigation showed that Romberg was, in fact, weaponizing rebels against our state. We've learned that they have been aiding the Bluedish rebels in Wayland, too. The military must stand ready for any possible attack coming from Romberg. We've gathered an intelligence report regarding the military research and production. They are building a massive army. Our military has no means to stand against such a superior force if we do not deploy new tactics. We cannot let them threaten us like this. Make the necessary agreements, Mr. Lancia. We'll have to use whatever we have to its limit. Of course, sir. David stood up. And yeah, Mr. President, Pearl has agreed to begin negotiations. We'll be moving on with that very soon. Our relations with Agnolia have greatly improved. Our ministries have scheduled many joint projects together. Cooperation between Vela and Sorlin has increased to a new level. However, we are seeing its negative impact with Lesbia. The region is very unstable. With the incidents at Rumberg, Valen, and Heliland, we must be very cautious. We can talk in more detail at our foreign policy meeting. Thank you, Mr. Vichy. Sarah was next. Our ministry is working day and night to improve our education system and increase its accessibility. We've since built about 100 new schools and improved accessibility. We've accomplished a lot with a new curriculum. Our forms will be greatly improving our outlook to society. Lilius suddenly stood up. Mr. President, there, there is an important report from our intelligence officers. We have disrupted an illegal arms deal that was taking place inside our borders. There seems to be several anti-government groups organizing against large-scale attacks. We might need to implement some new measures soon. We'll provide you with more detailed report at a later date. One last thing. I would like to transfer the Gendarmerie under the Ministry of Interior to improve the internal security efforts. You haven't heard of this before. I'm still working on the proposal and I have a legal back for it. I was going to mention it later. The Ministry of Defense shouldn't be meddling with internal security affairs through the Gendarmerie. We had several incidents where they were too violent too quickly and it seems military officers giving reckless orders at times. Well, the situation gets more problematic than it might be necessary. It will eventually cause a problem between our forces. There are already miscommunications going on. Will you transfer the Gendarmerie to the interior in the future? I will support you in the Gendarmerie Authority transfer. Now it's your turn. Excellent. Lilius smiled faintly. Oh, cool. So we're not even going to like address the fact that she totally just cut off uh, Ciara? Fantastic. All right. Well, do you have anything to share, Mrs. Morgna? Nia shook her head. Not at this moment, Mr. President. You're already well aware of what's going on. I'll update you on the next steps in the judiciary in another meeting. Thank you. Nia took her seat. Alright, next I want to talk about our new focus and some of my plans moving forward. Okay. 
Stand focus on changing our party as a whole. Public opinion is concerning. The state of our economy is very concerning. Honestly, I think the economy is probably the biggest problem. So we're going to go in a roll with that. The state of our economy is very concerning. It must be our focus to achieve quick economic development. Simon nodded in agreement. We can't get re-elected if we do not improve the economy. Almost everybody seemed to be in agreement with me. There are no comments. Let's move on with the meeting. Or not. I believe that's everything. <laughs> nice. That was an awkward little transition. Uh, everybody packed up and left the white room. I went back to my office. Carl Greiser is waiting for me by the door. Hey, Mr. President. I have a moment of your time. I have something to discuss. Yeah, of course. Let's go inside. I entered my office. I went up to my desk and sat down in my chair. Please have a seat, Carl. Yeah, thank you, sir, but I'm fine. I will not take long. The anti-corruption police has compiled a report regarding the active investigations. We've been watching the old guard closely, just as you asked, and found a very complex web of connections. There are missing links in our investigations, but the old guard seems to be involved in huge cases of corruption and lobbying. Most of the connections link to Chief Justice Hawker. Despite none of the members of the assembly having direct ties with him, there seems to be a complex web of connections that's proven very difficult to track. We also have another suspicion. Our findings led us to believe there's an ongoing cooperation between the Young Swords organization and the old guard. While this is huge, it is very difficult to create a solid case at the moment, and the justices of the court have immunity before the law. I don't see how we can take them down legally. If we do decide to make a case, we can arrest most of our connections in the assembly. However, there is probably more of this than we had made. Let's proceed with the case. As long as we hurt them, the court doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll give you an update soon. I'll also send you the detailed report of our previous findings. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Carl. He bowed his head and left the office. The last two and a half years have gone by so fast. Ah, no kidding. Okay. So, looks like we got three reports. So, let's, uh, already up here, let's go to Estord. Uh, gang violence diminished. The police chief of Estord uh, reported that the local police forces have finally eliminated one of the biggest money making schemes of the Coronelli. According to the report, over the last month, 40 mob members have been arrested along three high-ranking members of Coronelli. That's pretty dope. Alright, Gelsord, anti-government protests. Sweet. Yesterday morning, a group of protesters assembled in front of the Gelsord City Hall and have not yet dis uh, dispersed. The group was responsible for blocking out vehicles, including city buses and transport trucks, and been handing out anti-government pamphlets to passers-by. The mayor of Gelsor reported that the situation posed no active danger and that the people were only exercising their right to protest. It's not good, but at least it's not a violent protest again. And on tell from the whistleblower. Uh, Agent Hailstone has revealed intelligence about a secret nuclear weapons program developed in Rumberg. Intelligence has verified the details of the land about a heavy water facility in the north of the kingdom and a ballistic missile test site. The agent will be provided security under the protection program and will be given resources to transfer further intelligence to our units. That's a potentially bad development. Last thing we need is a crazy dude to launch nukes at us. Alright. Looks like I got enough time to do one more thing here. So, let's uh, deliver a speech to the country. Lucy and I walked into my office in the Maroon Palace to make my address to the nation speech. It was unusually crowded today. Cameras, lights, and microphones were set in place, and the crew was standing by, ready to start filming. Are you ready, sir? Yes, let's do it. Good. I think the crew is ready. As soon as you take your seat, we can go live. I took my seat and rearranged my notes on the desk as a crew member powdered my face with a cotton puff. After everybody was ready, the director gave the sign to start filming. I looked directly into the camera. My fellow citizens. Oh, this is a tough one. 
Let's go with this one. I'd like to speak about the events of the past months, about a great historic effort to give the words freedom, fairness, and hope new meaning and power. I took office with a plan to dismantle Sorglin's ancient government structure and replace it with one that met the needs of the country we are today. Alas, my vision was too grand for the narrow scope of our current assembly. Assembly members had their way. Tarkin Soul's constitution would last until the end of time. And so, they spitefully acted against me, putting their own pettiness before the needs of this country. But I will tell you this, I am not done fighting for you. I have not given up on my commitment to equality and justice. The future lies in the democratic movement of the West. We must keep striving for fair and transparent democracy in Swordland and abroad. Uh... Hmm. Let's go with this one. With or without the Assembly's support, there's no end to what we can achieve. I took a deep breath, loosing Shu to fly away from my forehead. We will start by focusing on the economy. Uh, this is a tough one. Um... Not the first one, so we're trying to pander to the audience. I thank you for standing by me, your president, both in good times and bad. A morgna vescore, vectan si sta. The director gave the cut signal and the cameraman stopped filming. My speech was finished. Nice, okay. Looks like we've reached the end of this chapter here, and I have a feeling we might be heading into the last chapter of the game. Uh, I mean, could be totally wrong, but since it looks like we're trying to angle for re-election already, uh, we might be. I'm not sure. Uh, so, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.